I hope everyone is doing well, despite the uncertainty and the difficulties that we face. And I am grateful for this opportunity to speak right now in this, in this marvelous panel. I've been uh, listening with attention and I've learned from all my colleagues in different parts of, of the world. So as you have heard in the past uh, few minutes, we are all navigating um, the, uh, an uncertain terrain. We have a lot of common ground in, in challenges that we face. Uh, mainly, we have discussed the increasing poverty and the increasing unemployment. But I think we also have a very big challenge ahead, which is the gender gap, because all this that we have discussed have um, a very strong uh, emphasis in women, in women who are the care, take uh, cares, take care of the homes, and who also work in health, mainly, especially in Latin America and Colombia, they're um, very prominent in the labor force in health sector, but also take care of their homes, their parents, normally their kids, and are also part of the um, economy who are um, helping and collaborating at home. So the gender gap is something very important to take into consideration as well as one of those challenges. And I think that is in the, in the short term in terms of, of how we're seeing Bogota. Uh, there's four types of economies who, uh, which are presented in this slide, which we've uh, kind of grouped together to see how we solve for those um, challenges and how we can work through the confinement in different terms with these type of, of populations. Obviously, informality is huge in Colombia, in Bogota, in almost half percent, fifty percent of the of the homes have some sort of informal uh, contract or informal worker or informal economy. So uh, we are talking that half of the city of Bogota is somehow informal. So when you try to um, understand this disease and map the disease and use data to understand how it's evolving and understand the economic effects of it and the social effects of it. And we don't have the data because the informality part of the problem is that it's very hard to, to see uh, the, the characterization of the people once they don't reveal it to you, given that they're so informal, it's impossible to really understand how we can plan for that. So we always plan understanding that half of the population we're going to work with, half of that population, we can't really uh, see it. So we just have to work understanding and work uh, with the half of the population of the city and the other half, we just have to un give um, a lot of education. We say in Spanish, pedagogía. And uh, hopefully they will understand the message. Well, we regulate the formal and we leave the informal to um, use some sort of the of um, of other type of, of measures, much more of the individual and uh, cultural and uh, kind of out regulation measures. So those are the challenges. But we are also working in a three prone strategy. That strategy is mainly working with the private partnership, public-private private partnership is one of the strengths in this partnership. Understanding that we need to flatten the, ep please go behind one, one slide. I don't, uh, yeah, the slide before. And the slide before, if you will. Understand that we need to flatten the epidemic curve and flatten also the recession curve. Um, so it, we don't really need, and we don't want to choose between one or the other, is see how we can flatten both. And if you go behind one more slide, so we can focus on my presentation. Um, one more, uh, please. One, exactly. We have been one. Uh, we have been one of the cities in Latin America who took measures very early on. Uh, we decided to do um, uh, a quarantine very early, which is when we had one contagious, one person who was confirmed uh, with coronavirus. And uh, we've been able to maintain a very low um, level of, of contagion in the city. And even though we are the, the city in Colombia with the highest level of contagious, because we are the capital and we have international, we have had international connections, the international airport, and it's, it's a very concentrated city in terms of, of urban development. So we have, obviously it's kind of like, uh, New York in a little in a little way of seeing it it is very very crowded it's a very crowded city so we've had a lot of contagious but we've been able to control the the velocity of the 
of the expansion of the of the disease. So we decided to look into two main factors. One, the number of beds in the in in the UCI, which is the, the the number of ventilators that we have disposable for people, and we decided that once it hit seventy percent, that would be a very uh, a red flag for us. Right now, we've maintained it below thirty percent. It's over. It's under twenty nine percent actually. We haven't had problems of of not being able to to address and Carolina, to serve. Carolina, por favor, te, te, le queda un minuto, Carolina, por favor, si puede ir acá. Ah, perfecto, perfecto. Uh, so basically, we've been able to contain the, the spread of the disease. And the other thing we've, we've been working for is the mobility of the people within the city. The mobility of the people within the city is very important. So we've been able to maintain the um, Transmilenio, which is kind of our subway, be, be below 35%. We grouped the economy, as I was saying before, into four main groups operating, those who are operating uh, because they were exempt, like the food chain. The ones who are doing home office, which is group number two, they were able to. We were able to transfer uh, transfer a lot of big employee employers to their homes and work from home, and they continue working from home even if confinement ends. We are working now with protocols for group number three, which is manufacturing uh, mainly and um, and and uh, public and private uh, obras. I mean construction. So we're opening for construction and manufacturing. And we are leaving for, for the last, the, the vulnerable, most vulnerable group, which is tourism and uh, um, events and um, restaurants. We're talk, work, we're, they're still under confinement for now. If you want to continue, just two slides. So you will see one more thing. Just two slides. Go ahead, go ahead. So this is, this is how we are connecting Bogota with two main programs. The, the programs who attend the uh, lower end of the informality, which is called Bogota Solidaria en Casa, we transfer cash to cash or, or, or food to the people who need it. No, the one before or after, I'm sorry, the one after, the one, the one after. Bogota Solidaria en Casa, uh, we transfer cash to the ones who need it, the informal ones. And, uh, and we work with a, a medium and small enterprises it's the next slide, please. In the middle of that graph, the next slide, please. That is the small and medium enterprises uh, who are actually 60%, represent 60% of the GDP of the city. And Bogota represents, with its region, 42% of the GDP of Colombia. So it's not minor. We work with them through a program called the Strategy of Mitigation and Rea uh, Economic Reactivation. We are working with them in doing trans uh, transformation technology. We're doing like acceler accelerated uh, digital transformation for them. We are working into uh, getting those on uh, uh, delivery, delivery, um, delivery of food to their homes. Uh, we're working with them in, in doing employment. So we're working in that middle ground through productive system, taking care of the whole uh, productive system and employment. Whereas in the informal, we're transferring cash and transferring food. So basically we have a two prone strategy, which is one is taking care care system for those who need it, but also uh, reactivating the, the, as possible, the economic system for those who are in the, in the middle of the graph, which is the, the ones who are actually generating the employment so we can take care of the employment in the present and in the future. Thank you.